Okay, I've counted down my top 15 movies of 2015 so far. Now let's get to the worst. Now again, there are plenty of movies I have not seen, and this is simply just my opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, and it'll and I'm curious what might be your worst films of 2015. With that said, there's not a lot of disappointments I've had in the movie theater. Yes, there are some movies that were disappointing, but ultimately still got two stars, so yeah, there isn't a lot of movies that I consider really bad this year. But there is still over 15, so I do have a dishonorable mention so far. And the dishonorable mentions are... Pam! Didn't quite make the top 15 worst. Minions. And Good Night, Mommy. A lot of people love this. Critics rave about this film. I didn't quite feel it was suspenseful and felt it was quite boring. But let's get to the actual 15 now. My number 15 I talked about recently, Max. Quite the cliched movie, not good in many ways. The only thing carrying it and keeping it in the high 15s of the worst is that yeah, the relationship with the boy and the dog is handled extremely well. Everything else, very, very poorly. Alright, my number 14, I am a little prejudiced against because I had seen the original, actually liked it, but because I have seen it so many times because of other people seeing it and I happen to be around those people watching it, I've grown to really, really hate the original film. And when the sequel is pretty much the first one just with a little bit of difference, it's really hard to like this one either. My number 14 is Pitch Perfect 2. That's all I really want to say about Pitch Perfect 2. Just go see my review. My number 13, The Boy Next Door. Yeah, this is a January film. It's bound to happen that there'd be a January film in my bottom, and this is one of them. This is a movie that I can actually sort of enjoy, but only because of the second half of the film. First half of the film, really mushy, very cheesy, very corny, terrible romance temptation movie. The second half of the film, pretty decent, suspenseful, over the top, crazy, so f bad that it's fun, suspense, stalker movie. And only because of the second half is it my number 13, rather than being in my top 10 worst films. Alright, my number 12 is a film that has some good qualities to it. Something I found a little funny. Some things that I do appreciate, but ultimately, as it went on, it just got worse and worse and worse. My number 12? Unfinished Business. Alright, my number 11 just barely stayed out of my top 10 worst. I don't think I need to talk about it too much because, like Pitch Perfect, it is a movie very, very similar to the original, just a whole lot worse. At least I like the original. This one, not so much. My number 11, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Just a louder, more annoying version of a decent parody of Die Hard. Okay, my number 10 might be a little controversial. Most people do hate this. It does have a really low score. It is another January movie, but I know some Die Hard fans that thought this was one of their favorite movies of the year. Go figure. My number 10 is Black Hat. Got the hacking down right. Has a few really good action moments, but for the most part, really boring, very tedious, and just plain... Eh. Especially the subplot of the romance, which makes absolutely no sense and comes out of... Well, you know it's gonna happen, but it just sort of just goes in guns blazing. Okay, my number nine is a sequel that didn't need to happen, that isn't anything like the original franchise, that takes all the bad things of modern comedy and puts it in something that shouldn't be. My number nine, Vacation. I would be completely fine if this were part of the sequel to We Are the Millers. Because 
that comedic that comedic style really fits what Vacation was going for. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit the comedy style of the original franchise and just feels like a terrible modernization of Vacation, at least for me. At least this Vacation did have one moment where I couldn't stop laughing and there are moments where I did laugh it just didn't feel like a vacation movie and I feel that that needs to be considered a bad movie. Vacation's my number nine. My number eight, I just recently saw, tried to watch it a second time, fell asleep when I tried to watch it a second time because I thought, surely this can't be a bad movie. It can't be as bad as what I thought, originally thought, uh, but it is. My number eight is Serena. A lot of good stars has some really great scenes, some nice setups, and some really good production value, but ultimately the whole film is just a complete mess. My number seven is a film that has a really high rating for the audience, but probably because the only ones who saw it are practically the only people that wanted to see it. My number seven is War Room. I don't really have a problem with faith-based movies. I've had movies that are about faith that I have liked and found inspirational. The problem is, sometimes it gets really cheesy, really corny, just really cliched. And that's the case for War Room. In fact, it feels so much so that it feels like it's meant to be a parody of a faith movie. But plenty of faith movie fans claim this is one of the best movies of all time, even when it feels like a parody of a faith movie. Go figure. My number six is a foreign film that came, well, it's supposed to come to America. I don't know if it has or not. I've seen the foreign version, and I'm sure the American version is just as bad or as worse for me. And yes, I can understand people with a different culture loving this film, especially if you're soccer fans or love foosball. But for me, I just felt like this movie was another movie that was very messy and didn't know exactly what it's meant to be. My number six is Underdogs. I think this is the only animated film to make my bottom 15. This honestly might be the only animated film that I've disliked this year. But mainly that's because Norm of the North, I think, is going to January, so don't have to worry about that on this list. Yay! Uh... Now, I really do like Adam Sandler movies, but mainly they've been hit or misses for me. I think the only modern ones past click that I've actually liked from Adam Sandler is Blended and Pixels. So, this year he had another one and I just didn't like it. It is The Ridiculous Six. If you're not an Adam Sandler fan, do not bother with this one. It's not going to convert to you and you're just going to be bored out of your mind because this movie is two hours long. It's two hours long. <laughs> it's two hours long. Adam Sandler movie. Alright, my fourth worst film. Now this is really into the stinkers. Uh, these are half a star or lower. I have four films this year that are half a star or lower. These are the bottom of the barrel, the crappiest ones I feel this year. My number four. One of the worst horror movies I've seen in recent years, well, excluding Ouija from last year. My number four. Sinister 2. Loved the first Sinister movie. Could not stand this one. At all. My number three is a film that's a sequel to a movie that many people like, that I've hated, and so it, so when um, those fans actually hate the sequel, I'm bound to hate this one. Hot Tub Time Machine 2. If it wasn't for another comedy this year, this would be the worst comedy of the year for me. I just talked about this one, so I'm not going to go into detail. Just go to my review. My number two, Smosh the Movie. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, the worst movie of 2015 for me is still my worst film of 2015 because it's the only film 
that I've given zero stars to this year. Hot Pursuit. Just go to my review. It tells you everything. So that was the worst 15 films so far from me. I still have more to see. There's still possibility of other movies making this top 15 worst list. But for now, this is all it is so far. So what is the worst films that you've seen this year? Go ahead and comment. Go ahead and list them out if you want. And as always, this is Bruce Gifford, and this was just my opinion.